You found me at last. I suspect you have questions. Hello friends, I'm Lady Sylvine and welcome to my realm of purpose. Today we'll be discussing the Red Larium Adol. The Adol's been featured across a lot of Dragon Age media. Dragon Age 2, Deception, Dark Fortress, Tevener Knights, and it was the main feature of the 2018 Game Awards trailer. So it's fair to say we should expect something big to happen with it in Dreadwolf. What is the Idol? The Red Larium Idol is exactly what it says on the lid. An artifact made from Red Larium. For those of you who don't know, Red Larium is like regular Blue Larium that's been corrupted by the Blight. It literally carries it, according to Bianca and in Inquisition. It's not typically something you can ever get near without it trying to kill or corrupt you, physically and mentally. As for the idol itself, it's not so much to look at. A couple hugging. Too thin to be dwarves. But it's sitting there, glowing softly like a ruby lit by the grace of the Maker himself. It's heavier than you'd think. Larium's heavier than you'd think too. But this was heavier than that. When I hefted it in my hand, it was like it wanted to keep moving. Like it was liquid inside. So here's just some various images to help you get a better picture of what we're looking at. Actually, the teaser trailer from 2018 that I showed in the beginning actually just gives a perfect idea of what it looks like, especially what we can assume is the final stage of its design. What's interesting about it is that they keep describing it as a couple embracing, or two lovers, or a god mourning her sacrifice, when there's actually three figures. The woman looks to be holding two figures, or holding one as two grasp onto her. It could have something to do with the whole betrayed woman thing Dragon Age has going on, where basically throughout Thetis' history, some significant woman in power has a lover and a husband, and through greed or envy, the husband betrays and or kills her. Gilda Fallon actually did a recent video where she talked about this. It's great. Please go watch that if you're interested. She has really uh, just an amazing channel. They all look like they're in a state of decay, but they don't necessarily look dead. Like, have you ever seen the preserved bodies from Pompeii? It looks like that, but better preserved. Almost mummified level of decay. Which brings me on to my next point. The woman. It seems to me like she's wearing a mask. You can see the gap between her face and the mask, especially around the eyes. And it looks like she's sleeping rather than in agony, like the mask implies. Her ears look rounded, but they are elongated from the jaw. She appears to be wearing some kind of nemes. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> uh, it's an Egyptian headdress, typically worn by the likes of Tutankhamun and Hatshepsut, and is typically worn to depict mourning or for funerary use. As it's worn by Isis, the mother goddess, who was believed to aid the dead in entering the afterlife. So it seems I'm getting a kind of Egyptian vibe from it all. Before we jump into the rest of the video, I want to lastly point out this. Why'd you do it, Bartrand? Were you already crazy before we even went into the deep roads? Or was it all the statue? Idol, not a statue. It wants to be worshipped. It wants me. He insists it's an idol, not a statue. Which is interesting because statues are meant to depict something or someone in a memorial kind of sense. An idol is meant specifically for worship. It's a religious item, something one might pray to, like a painting of the Virgin Mary, or even a crucifix. And now we're on to the idol's journey. 931 Dragon. The idol is first found in Dragon Age 2 where the champion of Kirkwall joins Bartrand's expedition into the Deep Roads. We find the artifact in the chamber of some forgotten primeval taig, belonging to the ancient dwarves, kind of just sat on a pedestal unceremoniously. Bartrand ultimately takes the idol, trapping the expedition party Hawk, as well as his own brother Varric, in the taig. 934 Dragon Varric and Hawk encounter Bartrand again, 
only to discover that he sold the idol to some woman, though he kept a piece of the idol for himself. It's up to the player to decide what happens to this piece of the idol. Either it's given to Varric, or it could be given to Sandal. If Varric keeps the piece, he has it kept secure and studied under strict restrictions. If Sandal is given the piece, he uses it to create a primeval Lyrium rune, but it's uncertain if that destroys it or uses it up, since Varric also uses it to upgrade Bianca and still has the piece. That crossbow is remarkable, Varric. I am surprised the dwarves have not made more of them. Let's assume that the piece of the idol exists up until current events. 937 Dragon The idol itself was sold to Knight Commander Meredith, who reshaped the idol into a sword. Somehow. The sword shatters in the battle with Hawk and their allies after Meredith overuses the Red Lyrium, and she's petrified into a mass of Red Lyrium and stone. Kind of like how the woman is depicted in the idol. 941, maybe 42 Dragon Samson is now in possession of Meredith's Red Lyrium sword, having reforged the pieces somehow. The sword is then confiscated by the Inquisition. 944 onward. A Carta assassin is confronted with a Valislein wearing elf who claims he can reclaim the idol from Meredith. The idol is taken from within her chest, somehow intact and in the same shape it was at the start of the journey. The Carta assassin then betrays the elf, as well as his own people, and sells the idol to someone he believes to be Magister Quintara, but is in fact an agent of Fenharel called Gaius. Gaius trades the idol to house Daenerys, yes, that Daenerys, presumably behind Fenharel's back. The idol is now in possession of the bastard, elf-blooded son of the now-deceased Magister Daenerys, Tractus, and is taken to Castellum Tenebris, a fortress near Neromanian, overlooking the Nosian Sea. The idol is used to craft another sword, and empower a man in a similar, if not identical way to how Fenris from DE2 was infused with Lyrium, except for now it's Red Lyrium. The fortress is attacked by the Kuhn, and in the chaos the idol is stolen by Cedric Marquette, who previously worked with Daenerys, but turned on him the moment things went pear-shaped. He doesn't get far, as Tractus intercepts him and takes the idol back. Solus watches all this through an alluvian. Tractus takes the idol to Navarra City, specifically the Grand Necropolis, where he contacts some Mortalitasi to help him perform a ritual that could help stop the Kunari invasion in the north. A blade springs forth from the base of the idol, and he uses both his own blood and the sacrifice of several slaves to breach the veil. As a rift is torn in the veil, Fenharel and a host of spirits attack the Mortalitasi, and Tractus is killed by Fenharel. One of the Mortalitasi flees with the idol and takes it back to Devinter. The idol then somehow makes it to an auction house in Lomeren, where both Tevinter and Kunari forces try to steal it, before Fenharel shows up through an alluvian, killing everyone before taking the idol. The elf walked unhurriedly to the pedestal. Slowly, he lifted the red lyrium idol from the pillow where it rested. He whispered something as he picked it up tracing his gloved fingers gently along the crowned figure who comforted the other. The idol's journey is now complete, and it has found its master. At the end of that journey, Solus is now in possession of the Red Lyrium idol. What does the idol do? Apparently, just about anything. This thing is kind of crazy powerful. It's created powerful weapons, it allowed Meredith to animate statues, as well as endure insane damage, and jump tens of feet in the air. Whether that was the result of the idol, or Bioware wanted to make an insanely fun boss battle, I'm unsure, but I'll assume it's the idol. It charges magic for powerful rituals. It can turn into a blade. It can lose pieces of itself, but still remain perfectly intact. And it has healing abilities. There's doubtless other things I'm overlooking, but it's so interesting that this one item can do just so much. It's also driven many people to madness, imparting a kind of compulsion, as well as hearing voices.
It also affects different people differently. Almost a, no, I need to go here kind of way. It reminds me a lot of the One Ring from Lord of the Rings, actually. So the effects of it seem to be permanent, since Farrakh in Inquisition talks about his brother, if he's still alive, is still in the sanatorium. Where are all the pieces? Meredith's sword was reforged and taken by Samson, I believe regardless of if you choose mages or templars in Inquisition. This gets confiscated by the Inquisition, so it's somewhere in their possession right now. The piece Bartran took is either in Varric or Sandal's possession currently. Another sword was forged for it, featured in Dark Fortress, and it snapped in two. Half went into the sea, the grip half, and partial blade, and the blade tip presumably went with either Fenris and company, or Vea and company. Or they could have just left it on the beach. It doesn't really show what happens to the other half. And that is all the pieces that I'm aware of. If I have missed anything, apologies. Final thoughts. I want to note that Solus's explanation of retrieving the idol was super interesting. Obviously because he's lying about who he is in that scene, but mostly just the way he treats the idol itself. Like he treats it so delicately. He calls himself its master, which could simply mean I own this, but perhaps it could imply something deeper. A master is an interesting word to use in this situation. It means several things. The male figurehead of a house, a man with people working under him, the owner of an animal, a person who has complete control over something. It's a pretty heavy word. I also want to touch on the fact that he says, it's journey, it has found its master, as if the thing is returning to him, rather than him being the one seeking it out. With that compulsion and resulting madness I touched on earlier, does that mean that it kind of is like the One Ring to rule them all? Or at least that kind of situation where the idol just wanted to get back to its master this whole time, and did whatever it could for whoever it came across to do that? We know that Solus and Mithal were involved in Lyrium mining, since both their statues are all over the place in the Lyrium Processing Centre. There's just a lot of pieces on the board, and we're not quite there yet. But it's coming together, bit by bit. I don't know if the idol is meant to represent Mithal, or perhaps some lost woman in Solus's life, but it's clear it means something to him personally, and it's specifically his idol, since he has control over it as its master. And that's all I've got for today. I've likely missed some things in all of this, and believe me, the amount of research this took was exhaustive, and my brain is just about melting out of my head. So, <laughs> sorry if I've missed anything. But I hope this helped get you up to speed with the idol and its journey, and gave you some things to think about as we wait for either another leak, or the summer of 2024, when a new trailer gets released. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps out a lot and I really appreciate it, I do. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day.